Master. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mortgage and Real Estate Podcast by Pinnacle. My name is Chris Giannino, and as usual, I am joined today by Pete Giannino. Pete, welcome to the show, of course. What's going on with you? Thanks for having me, Chris. As one of your prized guests. Great to be here. Yeah, well, um, I figured today would be a good time to just recap on a couple of things. Primarily, an opportunity that's available for home buyers that fit into a certain income limit criteria, but it's a newly available loan program that allows home buyers to purchase a home with a 1% down payment. And it's it's beneficial for a lot of people that fit into a certain bucket because um, it gives them a chance to get into a home sooner. I mean, if you don't have to save for a down payment um, of the even the 3%, you could get into a home with 1% down. It's a big advantage and it just became available. So I figured we'd talk about that a little bit today. Yeah, great. I actually want to work backwards a little bit because it's probably pretty well known, but let's let's um, address down payments in general because it, there is a perception out there. It, it may may not um, permeate through all of society, but there's at least a, a, a perception out there that 20% down is required at a minimum. But in fact, it's it, I don't know if it's uncommon, but maybe it's less common um, to have 20% down than 15, 10, 5, 3, 3.5. Three and, and now we're talking even about 1% down. A lot of people are keeping cash these days um, and still proceeding with those home purchases, but able to keep some cash in their pocket. So 20% down, not required. That's in, We're kind of addressing the obvious, but sometimes it's not obvious to people. So first of all, don't need 20%. Don't need 15, don't need 10, don't need five, because today we're talking about three, three and a half, and, and even 1% down. Great opportunity. So, you know, you, you touch on this 1% down opportunity. Um, wow, that's, that's new. I mean, that's hot off the presses. Yeah, it is. But, I, you know, it's not for everyone. But I'll tell you what, here's the deal. Say, let's just say you have a, um, let's, just, let's just get right down to the nuts and bolts of it. There is a certain thing in our industry called median income for a, any particular area. And, here, and what you do is you, you get onto um, a website. It, what is it? I mean, you could Google it even and just put in the medium area income. And the AMI. Yeah, it's a, it's a lookup tool. And you look it up through that website. It'll be one of the first things that pop up. And you put in the address of the property. It's address specific. And you use that number. It'll give you the the uh, the average income for that area right away. And you'll know if you make over that amount, then you, you wouldn't qualify for the 1% down option. And if you make at or below that amount, then you would qualify for it. It's pretty much that simple. Um, and it's just became available. It's, it's, we're one of the few lenders offering it is my understanding. So if, if you do fit into that, um, then what it is, is it's a grant that's given. You don't have to pay the funds back. So let's say you're still doing a 3% down loan option is what you're doing. It's just that the bank is giving you a grant for two percentage points of the required 3% down payment. So you're still coming in with the 1%. They'll do this up to a maximum of $4,000. That's great. That's great news. So the way to break it down a little further or to restate what you just said is that the, the loan amount is still going to be 97% of the purchase price. Right. So we're not increasing the loan amount. No. We are just increasing the down payment without money out of your pocket. So the borrower, the buyer, is still, their portion of the down payment is still just 1%. And the grant money is makes up the other 2%. So great opportunity for people who fall into this category, this income category, first of all. But if their obstacle is down payment, or if they simply want to keep some more cash in the bank, then this could be a great product for them. Yes, and you might be wondering, um, it's hard to figure out these days exactly what you make as income. You know, I mean, if you want to get to the bottom of it, the best way to do it is to reach out and give us a call and we would just take a look at the documentation for your income to calculate it, 
just like an underwriter would calculate it. And then we can determine if you qualify for that program. Now, let's say let's say you don't and you're looking at maybe a 3% down payment option because the money that you make is above the limit. Well, there, there are options as well that you could still get some help with the down payment because um, if you fit in that, that area median income or below that limit, then you qualify for one thing. If you're at 80% of the um, what, what is it? The, the high income for the area. If you're at 80%, there's other loan options that would apply. Like let's just get, let's just let you know. So $1,250 you would qualify for, for down payment assistance. If you're at 80% or below. And, um, and then there's another program where you get 2,500 if you're at 50% or below that income limit. So that's where we would have to just take a close look at it and see if it would be more advantageous to go for the, uh, to get the 2,500 because you're, at the 50% mark of below on income, or if it's better to just get the 2% grant. So, cause you can't use both of them simultaneously, simultaneously on the same loan. Yeah. So what, what you're, what you're describing is some incremental, um, aspects to the grant. So you're not just, it's not, it's going to be available to a category of people, but at different levels. So we want, like Chris, just like you indicated, Chris, we want to, we want to look at that income and, and see where you fall in that range. Um, like, and we're talking about, and again, I think you area median income lookup. I just, I'm here looking on the screen right. and that is, that is the search tool. So if you want to get an idea for yourself, um, go ahead and type that in area median income lookup, and you can put in an address you're interested in and, um, see what the area median income is compared to yours. Yeah. And once you're done, once you get the loan, it's just a regular conventional loan. There's nothing different about it. Once the loan closes, you have the money. It's not, um, it's not a loan. It's not needed to be repaid. It's a grant. Once you close, you're done. You don't owe the money back. Yeah. And it's not, interestingly, it's not only limited to, um, you know, uh, single unit properties. You can even do two to four units and, but that, that has going to have a, a little bit higher uh, down payment percentage required, but still I, I, sometimes I'm dealing with first time home buyers who want to, who want to live, who want to buy two family and live in one of them. Um, so we could explore that option too. Credit scores again, credit scores. We're not looking, these are not limited to just the high elite credit scores. There's, there's some credit scores um, under 700 that are going to qualify for this as well. Oh, not to get into credit scores and politics. I don't know. I mean, I have, I've been getting a lot of phone calls on it. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Social media is exploding, it seems like, with this uh, notion of borrowers with lower credit scores uh, qualifying for lower rates with people with higher credit scores than people with higher credit scores. And, you know, it's it's not the case, honestly. It just isn't. Um, it It's actually already been adjusted into pricing for months because it actually goes into effect for any loan that's delivered to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac by May 1st. Now, some people listen to this like, what the hell is he talking about? But the bottom line is it's been on the news lately where it says people with lower credit scores are now qualifying for better rates than people with higher credit scores. And my understanding and and what I've talked to different um, colleagues about and the banks that we work with is basically if you had a lower credit score, then you don't get hit quite as hard with pricing hits. And if you have the higher credit score, you don't get the as large of an advantage as you did otherwise. However, if you have strong credit, you still qualify for better terms than if you have lower credit. Right. So this the message is not go out and default on your liabilities or accrue a bunch of credit so that your score goes down and your price gets better. That's not how it works. Still work on your credit. Keep the scores high. Um, don't fall in love with the message. I thought you said we weren't going to get into that much. I wasn't. But when I saw you smile, when I mentioned the word credit, well, I guess it's two words, credit score. Then I knew the slope had been created and the slide had been initiated. Well, have have you have people reached out to you about this because I'm getting multiple calls per day on this topic and and I guess it's because it's just now hitting the media yeah i have and and unfortunately anytime 
anytime a topic like this uh, is distributed and then consumed by the public, there's not enough information provided. So the message is succinct, even if it's not complete or accurate. So our job is to dispel the myth a bit. Um, I, I think it's kind of obvious and reasonable that it's not a good strategy for us as the public to just go and worsen our credit. Um, that it sounded, I mean, a lot of people did get excited about it, though. So <laughs> some people didn't like it, and some people got real excited. That's exactly right. Some people thought, if, so you're saying a worse credit is going to get me a better price. And let me, I think what you said at the outset is, a, is appropriate. It's not as if, the worse credit gets the better price than the better credit. The worse credit might get a better price than it previously got. Right. It reminds me of one of the, the situations like in grade school where the teacher miss, misspeaks and then there's some student in the class that immediately jumps on it and repeats what she said. Like, so this is the case now? Yeah, we don't have to show up anymore? Great analogy. You know, but... Um, you were that kid, weren't you? Oh, I hated that kid. <laughs> uh, nobody likes that kid, necessarily. That's funny. But, uh, but we, all know, we all know that kid. Yeah, and, and, and so we got to calm down, um, think logically, and continue to, continue to pay your bills, continue to apply for reasonable credit, <laughs> and try to pay that credit off. Um, but, okay... We digress. So again, this all came up because I made the foolish mistake of providing you some of the terms in connection with this um, borrower smart program, where you can put as little, where you get, you can get a credit to apply towards your costs at closing, um, which would allow you to put essentially one percent down of your pocket. So that's again, we kind of, as you know, we've talked about a lot of topics on this on this podcast, and and really wanted to talk. We don't spend a lot of time on, on first-time home buyers, and, and that's shame on us because they're just a really important segment. And, um, you know, we we initiated the podcast talking about college students buying homes. So, you know, as we reflect back, we, we realize that, for, and as we see this great new product, we really need to tackle first-time home buyer options. Yeah, I mean, you got a couple changes took place this year. FHA reduced their... Their, their PMI, the uh, private mortgage insurance that is on FHA loans. And FHA loans sometimes has a stigma that it's only for first-time home buyers, which it's not. But it is an option that we look at for home buyers that um, may have lower credit scores or or when when down payment requirements were higher, FHA only required 3.5% down. But now conventional loans allow for, for lower down payments and this grant that we were talking about before, that's actually only for conventional loans. So, but FHA does, does in general allow for lower credit scores to even get approved. I mean, we're talking 580 technically yep. uh, or above. And, um, and then if you get into this conventional category where, um, so it, there are some opportunities. I mean, if you want to look at both sides, the, this, this new guideline that, that came into effect, I mean, if you have a, 650 660 credit score and you only have one percent for a down payment it does give you some options where you could get into a home uh so it it's um it's worth getting that information out there and that's why i figured it'd be good to talk about it today yeah and just to um clarify some things you know we when we're talking you still have to qualify the borrowers who can take advantage of this um option are in the category of some percentage below the area median income. So then it begs the question, well, if if that income is some percentage below the area median income, then will that person still apply, uh, still qualify, I'm sorry, for a mortgage? Well, again, that comes back to credit. We, you know, those, your credit cannot reflect a number of monthly liabilities or high monthly liabilities. So it, in order to still qualify for a mortgage. So um, just to, you know, dispel the idea of, of worsening your credit. Don't we still need, we still need low liabilities in order to qualify for this type of opportunity because the income is going to be a little lower. Do you have that website pulled up right now? I have a lot of websites pulled up right now, but uh, yeah, I got it. So just to give the listeners an idea, what would be like the address of our office 
for example. Okay, let me get that in here. And I have to I have to click OK for the disclaimer that is issued here. But yeah, the address of our office, everyone should visit if you're in, in the Hill neighborhood of St. Louis, 2020 Marconi in the heart of the Hill. Plug to Milo's Bochy Club across the street. Uh, St. Ambrose, if we're not at Milo's, we're at St. Ambrose Catholic Church uh, next door, essentially. And if we're not there, we're likely volunteering at the local hospital. No question. No question about it. So if you need um, any Italian food, come to the Hill. Uh, All right. I'm putting it in 2020 Marconi Avenue. And so I have the data. Um, Interesting. So the area median income is 96,800. Wait a minute. Crazy. Are you sure about that? You know what? It's got, uh, this is crazy. Now we, we do know. Well, I know it's very specific. It's very specific for the addresses. So, um, cause I just looked one up in the city on my home address and it showed the area median income at 44,000. Well, the, 800. F- the, f- the 50% of the area median income is 48,400. Oh, oh, oh. No, you got to be at 50%. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so the area median income is 96,800. Got it. 50% of the area median income is 48,400. Okay. So yeah. in this case, for the 1% down program, they would have to be at 50% of the area median income, which would be, what was it? 48. So the area median is 96,800. And the fifty percent of that number is forty eight four. So if you make forty eight four or below is when you would qualify for the two percent grant, allowing you to only have to put one percent down for a down payment on a conventional loan. But is there eighty percent on there as well? Yep. Um I just had it. Eighty percent is seventy seven thousand four hundred and forty. So if you make seventy seven thousand or below, then you would qualify for one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars of down payment assistance. And then you're putting, you could put 3% down. So that, that 1250 would go towards uh, that down payment. Chris, when you look at these numbers, I mean, I know every, like you said, appropriately, every address is, is unique. And if you, if you typed address, an address five miles from here, you might get a completely different set of numbers. But with this, these numbers in St. Louis City, uh, you could probably get, a lot of people could fall into this category and qualify for this opportunity. Absolutely. And it all comes down to what else shows up on their credit report. Do they have large car payments? Do they have uh, credit card payments, student loan payments? If you don't have uh, a lot of other debt or liabilities that show up on your credit report that you have to pay monthly, then what you could qualify for would be um, more than what you could qualify for otherwise. So it all comes down to the debt that you have. So let's say you bought a $175,000 house and you qualify for this, you, you put your 1% down. Right now, you know, your principal and interest payment on a $175,000 purchase with 3% down would be $1,072. And then the PMI, the PMI on something like that would be about $35 a month. So you could essentially put 1% down, get a 2% grant, have um, a payment around twelve hundred dollars, or I mean eleven hundred dollars a month for principal, interest, and PMI, and then you add your taxes and insurance on top of that. Now, this is a very, very general estimate. Just so you know, these numbers have been changing daily and throughout the day. But I like to get solid information when I listen to podcasts, so I want to give you some some real data. And you just got to check in. It it changes. It's continuous. So, but, um, but just to give you an idea. So if you don't have any additional debt, you could qualify for that. Or maybe if you had just a a little bit of additional debt on your credit report and you had high credit scores, that would be something you could qualify for. Now this program is in, in the mortgage world and in real estate, a first time home buyer is classified, is classified as someone who has not owned a home in the previous three years. This uh, program is not restricted to first time home buyers. Although the the one percent down program is not where you where you get a two percent grant. However, I believe uh, the other program is where you get the twenty five hundred or the one thousand two hundred fifty credit. So these things, there's a lot of little caveats to this and that. So the best way to do it is to to give us a call and we can look into everybody's specific situation. But the key is there's there's opportunity out there and you want to make sure if there's money on the table, you're not leaving it there. Yeah, and these these are these are while there are parameters to any any loan program, um, I think it's clear that that there are going to be a number of people who can fall into this, and and it's worth exploring 
especially um, right now when, when keeping some money in your pocket isn't a bad thing at all. Uh, and, and if you have a chance for the receipt of, of money that's not going to be characterized as a loan, is not going to be required to be paid back, take advantage of this opportunity. Um, you know, I think back and my first home, you know, everybody they talk about interest rates and my first home was um, an interest rate of 8%. And that was on a 15 year mortgage. So, um, and, and there was no grant money or anything available. And I was, I was buying, uh, not, you know, I was buying, um, one block from my current office. So, um, this kind of program was not available. Uh, and, and, you know, this could be a good starting spot for someone providing equity right off the bat on their home without money coming out of their pocket. Maybe they use it for, maybe that money's still saved because they anticipated the 3% down requirement. That money could be used for upgrades to the home. Or closing costs if needed. Closing costs if needed. Yep, a lot of opportunities there. So that's a, that's really a, attractive because we were we had other things to talk about in terms of first time home buyers, but that since this is relatively new, um, well, very new, it has to be uh, has to be highlighted, of course. But the three percent down option um, is is very attractive to so still keep you in a conventional loan. You know, right now um, because of the competitive nature of the market, it seems like. I don't want to overstate this, but it seems like sellers who are receiving multiple offers are um, leaning towards the conventional loan products. 100% over FHA. And not uh, from our perspective, we, we see FHA, it seems like, as it's a very viable option. It's very rare for us not to be able to get an FHA loan to the closing table. But I know that there's... there's uh, there's It's a know, battle. It's a it, battle to... to um, overcome the negative connotation that seems to be affiliated with FHA because it's a very attractive product. But due to um, the perception that there, an perception. FHA loan could create more obstacles to closing, the sellers seem to be eliminating those from their selection. Well, when you're, when it's this competitive, yeah. you're going to, it's going to be one of those things. Yep. Uh, and I, I'm having that kind of, it's interesting, at least the way I've priced some loans recently. And in particular today, um, the, I had, I have some clients who are, were contemplating FHA because of the three and a half down payment. And in fact, the interest rate is a little lower. And so the whole monthly payment looks better. Mm-hmm. Um, but I w- I'm going to be communicating with them about the, ve- the, probably the necessity of going conventional, even if that decreases their buying power a little bit, because it could be eliminated with FHA. Well, yeah, and if you if you qualify for both, you could put in a conventional offer and do an FHA loan. You would have to amend the contract, but the point is you still qualify for conventional, so you could still just go back to conventional. One last thing, I did have a client today, too, who we sent out a pre-approval. So all these things go into the equation. Well, that's why you want to work with the professional. But I have a client today who we did a pre-approval for. They qualified for 175 on a purchase for a conventional loan. And they were disappointed because they, they the homes that they were attracted to were in a higher price point. So when we, when we looked at it and did the calculation on an FHA loan, then they were able to get approved for 210000 so another consideration, yeah, there might be that upfront PMI that you have to add to your loan amount on an FHA loan, but the parameters are different because FHA is a little bit more lenient on the amount of debts that you have with the relationship to your income. So it's something that you want to look at. And then those, those clients, after they do a couple of things to get their debt ratio lower, they may just refinance into a conventional loan down the road. So sometimes the most important thing is to get the house that you want and then take care of a couple of things and, and better your situation in the long term. So all things that need to be considered and looked at and just not overlooked because every situation is different. Yeah, great point. The, it goes back to kind of a theme that keeps coming up every week in these episodes which is do what it takes to get the house you want. And if you are agile and, you ha- and you're and you working with people who take into account all the different products, strategies, um, short-term, long-term opportunities, you will be able to get to the comfort zone at some point if it's not at the outset. So there, you, there, sometimes buying a home is not simply um, a one-size-fits-all. You're not just getting a mortgage and then you're stuck with it for 30 years. You, you're trying to get a loan 
so that you can get the house and get to the closing table. After that, maybe there are chances to reduce your payment, reduce your interest, change your loan terms, remove a borrower, a lot of options. So don't be, don't be stuck um, and think there's some overarching traditional method that needs to be followed. That's right. So um, a couple key points that we touched on. Uh, hopefully you get something out of this, but give us a call to get a more detailed analysis of your situation. Um, thank you so much for, for listening. Please follow the Mortgage and Real Estate Podcast by Pinnacle. We are available anywhere you listen to your podcasts. We would love a review um, and reach out if you have any questions or check out our website at thepinnacleloans.com. Thank you.